the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Siblings in Christ, on this most holy night when our Savior Jesus Christ passed from death to life, we gather with the Church throughout the world in vigil and in prayer. This is the Passover of Jesus Christ. Through light and the Word, through water and oil, we proclaim Christ's death and resurrection, share Christ's triumph over sin and death, and await Christ's coming again in glory. Let us pray. Eternal God, in Jesus Christ, you have given the light of life to all the world. Bless this new fire and increase in us a desire to shine forth with the brightness of Christ's rising until we feast at the banquet of eternal light through the Son of Righteousness, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the ending. To Christ belongs all time and all the ages. To Christ belongs glory and dominion, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
us pray. O oh God, you are the creator of the world, the liberator of your people, and the wisdom of the earth. By the resurrection of your Son, free us from our fears, restore us in your image, and ignite us with your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the night of salvation. At the vigil of Easter, we gather around fire, word, and water, proclaiming through story and song that ours is a God who continuously brings life out of death. On this night, we experience again the heart of God's baptismal promise and the center of our faith. We are claimed and cleansed, renewed in the death and resurrection of Christ. We gather with all saints of every time and place to celebrate the good news. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our Vigil readings and responsive hymns, as well as the sermon this evening, have been provided by Salem's youth. They have put their heads together and come up with creative ways to tell God's story through dance, through skits, through artwork, and through the proclamation of the gospel. We thank them for bringing this Easter vigil to life. The creation and god stepped out on space and he looked around and said i'm lonely i'll make me a world and as far as the eye of god could see darkness covered everything blacker than a hundred midnights down in a cypress swamp then god smiled and the light broke and the darkness rolled up on one side and the light stood shining on the other and god said that's good and then god reached out and took the light in his hands and god rolled the light around in his hands until he made the sun and he set that sun ablazing in the heavens. And the light that was left from making the sun, God gathered it up all in a shining ball and flung it against the darkness, spangling the night with the moon and stars. Then down between the darkness and the light, he hurled the world. And God said, that's good. Then God himself stepped down and the sun was on his right hand and the moon was on his left. The stars were clustered about his head and the earth was under his feet. And God walked, and where he trod, his footsteps hollowed the valleys out and bulged the mountains up. Then he stopped and looked and saw that the earth was hot and barren. So God stepped over to the edge of the world, and he spat out the seven seas. He batted his eyes, and the lightnings flashed. He clapped his hands, and the thunders rolled. And the waters above the earth came down. The cooling waters came down. Then the green grass sprouted, and the little red flowers blossomed. The pine tree pointed his finger to the sky, and the oak spread out his arms. The lakes cuddled down in the hollows of the ground, and the rivers ran down to the sea. And God smiled again, and the rainbow appeared, and it curled itself around his shoulder. Then God raised his arm, and he waved his hand over the sea and over the land, and he said, Bring forth, bring forth, and quicker than God could drop his hand, fishes and fowls and beasts and birds swam the rivers and the seas, roamed the forests and the woods, and split the air with their wings. And God said, that's good. Then God walked around, and God looked around on all that he had made. He looked at his sun, and he looked at his moon, and he looked at his little stars. He looked on his world with all its living things, and God said, I'm lonely still. Then God sat down on the side of a hill where he could think. By a deep, wide river, he sat down. With his head in his hands, God thought and thought. Till he thought, I'll make me a man. Up from the bed of the river, God scooped the clay. And by the bank of the river, he kneeled him down. And there the great God Almighty, who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky, who flung the stars to the most far corner of the night, who rounded the earth in the middle of his hand, this great God, like a mammy bending over her baby, kneeled down in the dust, toiling over a lump of clay, till he shaped it in his own image. Then into it he blew the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Amen.
Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. The rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah with his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons entered the ark, they and every wild animal of every kind, and all domestic animals of every kind, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every bird of every kind, every bird, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days on the earth, and the waters increased, and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The water swelled and increased gently on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. At the end of forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made, and sent out the raven. And it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took it, and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark, and the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf, so Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days, and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him any more. In the six hundred first year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons, and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you, for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth.
As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone, and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had, that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea.
Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
Thus says the God, Lord God, to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied, as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophecy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Ezekiel cried them dry bones. Ezekiel cried them dry bones. Ezekiel cried them dry bones. Oh, hear the word of the Lord. The toe bone's connected to the heel bone. The heel bone's connected to the foot bone. The foot bone's connected to the leg bone. The leg bone's connected to the knee bone. The knee bone's connected to the thigh bone. The thigh bone's connected to the back bone. The back bone's connected to the neck bone. The neck bone's connected to the head bone. Oh, hear the word of the Lord. Them bones, them bones gonna walk around. Them bones, them bones gonna walk around. Them bones, them bones gonna walk around. Oh, hear the word of the Lord. The head bones connected to the neck bone. The neck bones connected to the back bone. The back bones connected to the thigh bone. The thigh bones connected to the knee bone. The knee bones connected to the leg bone. The leg bones connected to the foot bone. The foot bones connected to the heel bone. The heel bones connected to the toe bone. Oh, hear the word of the Lord. Oh, hear the word of the Lord. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress.
would like to tell you an incredible story. It is about four young people, four boys to be exact, and they lived in Jerusalem, and their names were Daniel, Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego. Abednego? Yes, Abednego. Abednego? Oh no! Shadrach, what kind of name is that, Meshach? Who has a name like that, Shadrach? Meshach? Abednego! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego lived in Judah a long time ago. They had funny names and they lived far away, but they knew what was right and they knew what to say. This is the story that you ought to know about Shadrach. Shadrach. What kind of name is that, Meshach? Meshach. Who had a name like that, Shadrach? Shadrach. Meshach. Meshach. Abednego. As I was saying, the story is about four boys who lived in Jerusalem. Now the citizens of Jerusalem paid a tax to the king of Babylon, the country next door. One day, they decided not to pay the tax any longer. This made the king, Nebuchadnezzar, so angry that he organized an army and invaded Jerusalem. He conquered the city and took many prisoners, including Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they got to Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar had the four boys along with so many others taken to his palace. He intended to educate them, train them, and strengthen them with rich food. However, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, no, let us have the plain food we were taught to eat at home. Sure enough, when the king tested them later, the boys were stronger and brighter than any of the others, which just show goes to show it pays to remember what you learned at home. It pays to remember. We're mm. smart. Everything was fine until one night, Nebuchadnezzar had a nightmare. It frightened him so much that <clears throat> that when he woke up, he could not remember what he had dreamed. So he called magicians, wise men, and astrologers, and commanded that they tell him what his dream was. And as if that were not impossible enough, he demanded to know what the dream meant, too. He was so upset, he even threatened to have the wise men cut into little pieces if they could not answer his questions. And of course, the wise men could not answer Nebuchadnezzar's questions. No one could tell someone else what he had dreamed. But the wise men did not want to lose their heads, so finally they sent for Daniel, and Daniel said he would do his best. He went to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and together they prayed to the one God and asked him to show them the answer. That night, God gave Daniel the answer to Nebuchadnezzar's questions, and the next morning, Daniel went to see the king. He said, I can answer your questions. He said, you dreamed about a statue of gold, silver, brass, iron, and clay. A big stone broke the feet of the statue, and it shattered into a thousand pieces. Then the stone turned into a mountain, filling the whole land. This is what the dream means, Nebuchadnezzar. You are a good king. You are not gold in the statue, but the kingdom that follows will not be good. They are the silver, brass, iron, and clay, and they will not last forever. Nebuchadnezzar was so impressed that he made Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego rulers in Babylon. He even made a decree about their God, and this is what he said. Your God is a God of gods. Your God is a God of gods. Your God is a Lord of kings. Your, Your God, God is, is a Lord, Lord of, of kings. kings. A revealer of secrets. Revealer, revealer of, of secrets. secrets. Praise the Lord your God. Praise, praise the, the Lord, Lord our God. God. Let the people praise. Let the, the people, people praise. praise. Hallelujah. Amen. So everything went fine until the king decided to build an image and make everyone worship it. He made a law that whenever the people heard the sound of the horn and the pipe and the lyre and the psaltery and the bagpipe, that they were to bow down to this image. Or he would have them drown, thrown into the fiery furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego worshipped the one true God. And he had said, do not worship idols. So furnace or no furnace, they knew what they had to do. And it was not long before someone tattled to the king. 
King, did you know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are not worshipping your idol? Nebuchadnezzar did not know that, and he called the boys in to find if the rumor were true. When they said it was, Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be thrown into the furnace. So the guards heated the furnace and threw the boys in, and... It's hot. It's not hot. It's not hot. In the furnace, man. It's not hot in the furnace, man. This furnace is cool, 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 cool. cool. Is it hot? No. In the furnace, man. It isn't hot. In the furnace, man. It isn't hot in the furnace, man. This furnace is cool, 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 cool. cool, cool. cool. That was too much for Nebuchadnezzar. He called out to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come out of the furnace, and they did. They marched right up to the king. Nebuchadnezzar had really learned a lesson. He had seen the power of their God, and he made a decree that anyone who ever again said anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would be cut into little pieces. Then he turned to the people and said, there is but one true God, and we must, must worship him. Now let us all praise God. A reading from the sixth chapter of Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? 
Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might not no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. The life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbi, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Lizzie. So I'm just gonna be hopping on here to kind of share some of my thoughts about the text, obviously, um, but a little bit more about what, how it applies to us and what are we going to do with it. Um, so, you know, if we start in the context of our reading today with the gospel, um, you know, this is the big story. This is kind of like the big part of the gospel. This is kind of, you know, what most of our religion revol revolves around. And, you know, we have, we celebrate it every year with lots of stuff, but we also um, remember every Sunday, every week. Um, so, you know, if we start there, the very beginning, it starts in darkness. Um, before the sun rises, the disciples go up to the tomb. Um, and even before that, right now, this is three days after Jesus died. This is the disciples' 
only mentor, only leader in the group who they hope at least knows a little bit of what's going on because I don't think any of the disciples, even the ones that we, you know, uh, lift up the most who like know the most, I don't think any of them knew what was going on most of the time. I think they're kind of, they, you know, they were just, you know, following along like, okay, Jesus, yeah, let's do this. They asked a lot of questions, obviously, but they weren't like super positive about what was going on. And the only guy who seemed like he did just died. He was executed by the state um, by a chanting crowd of people who wanted him to die and who probably wanted to kill them too. So these disciples, they were all in hiding. They were terrified, they were in fear, and they didn't think any of it, they didn't see any end in sight. They didn't think any of it was ever gonna end. Um, they kind of thought like, well, that's the end. I guess we kind of wasted a lot of our life for this thing and now it's over and we should probably get out of here before they kill us too. Um, but you know, as we know, as you know, through those years of the future, that's not the end of the story, right? Jesus comes back, it's awesome. It's not the end, they're can't come out of hiding. Um, and it's like not the end of the story and this is a really cool thing that happens. And um, you know, tomorrow we're gonna spend all day celebrating that. We're gonna be celebrating how awesome it is that Jesus has come back. And you know, we're gonna have all the flowers and all the beautiful decorations only come out once a year. Um, a lot of us are gonna have fancy dinners. My grandparents are gonna come over for the first time in a while. Um, you know, it's a really great day of celebration and you know, it's for good reason too. It's a pretty miraculous thing. Like Jesus is back. Like, it's just amazing. We are all so happy about that. Um, but I think, you know, the year doesn't end after this and the Bible doesn't end after the resurrection. Um, there's still lots of stuff that happens. There's still many, many chapters telling the stories of the disciples. And for us, like our life doesn't just end after the resurrection. Um, we celebrate Easter for a while, we have a little short season of Easter Sundays, and then we go into Pentecost, right? Um, so what do we do with that? And, you know, when, so when, when in the story, when Jesus comes back to disciples, the first thing he says to them, when he finally greets them, a little bit after the part that we're talking about right now, the first thing he says to them is, peace be with you, right? He doesn't go up and say, like I think many most of us would expect to happen, go like, yeah guys, we made it, uh, and give like chest bumps and like be like high fives and like, yeah, I made it, I'm back, look at me, I'm so cool. And he's like, yeah, I come back from the dead, I got all these superpowers, I'm so cool, I'm so awesome. And the disciples, you know, you would expect them to go like, yeah, we're awesome, let's go. And they like run around like celebrating and they like have a huge party. And then they're like, yeah, Jesus comes back. We're gonna make a religion out of this. And then they go around and start being like, Jesus is awesome. And like, it's all great, right? They don't make any mistakes. They follow all the rules correctly. They have a very easy journey. Everyone loves them. And then like, now we're here. But like, you know, that doesn't happen. Um, So for them, Jesus does not come bearing lots of money. He doesn't magically fix the situation. He doesn't like kill the entire Roman army um, and take takes over the entire land. Um, he brings peace, right? Um, and the disciples don't magically become saved or protected. They're still pretty scared, I'm pretty sure. They're still in danger. They're still on the run. They are still a very small minority of people who speak out against like big religious authorities and government authorities. So they're still in a lot of danger by a lot of different people. Um, but Jesus comes and gives them hope and he gives them peace and he gives them reassurance. And if we think about what that means, like what, the, what does that mean for us? Um, when we, the day after Easter, um, the weeks afterwards into Pentecost, just because we celebrate Jesus being alive, but we're still in a pandemic, right? Jesus does not come and magically wave a magic wand and fix all of our problems all, all at once as much as we would like him to. Um, so we have to wrestle with this, that this is the such good news that we talk about all the time. Like this is the good news of the gospel that Jesus comes back and he's resurrected and he saves us. But if he doesn't give us you know, any material goods, he doesn't, you know, on Easter, you don't all get like $5,000 in a bank account or something like that. Um, we still have to keep on living our lives. So how do we do that? How do we, how do we think of Jesus? How do we think of the resurrection? And how do we think of the good news for our lives? Um, so for me personally, I think of Jesus and the good news as home. That's my home, right? Um, no matter how far away you think you get, no matter how lost you feel, no matter how buried down into a hole that you think will ne you'll never be able to get out of and you feel like boxed in by this like steel box that you think no one can ever penetrate and no one can get you out of it, you know, there's Jesus right where he is, right, right where he always is, right? Um, I feel like Jesus is always there kind of, no matter how far I get, if I remember like Jesus is there, 
I feel less alone. I feel like, you know, Jesus can be right next to me in my room when I'm being really sad or something like that. Um, you know, when I'm stuck at a computer staring all day, doing schoolwork that I think is dumb and makes me stressed out and stuff, you know, Jesus is there. He's right by my side. Um, and it feels like he's always offering me a hand for help if I have a need. He's always offering me someone to rely on. Um, so that can mean many different things for you all. We're, none of us have the same problems. None of us are fighting the same battles or locked in the same box. Um, and Jesus means different, different things for all of us. But I would, you know, I would invite you to think about that. And while tomorrow we're going to obviously spend lots of time celebrating and being happy, which we should because like Easter songs are the best and the church always looks so pretty on Easter. Um, I invite you to also think about how this means for the rest of your for the rest of your life and what are you going to do with the news that the rest of this year, how are you going to deal with the rest of this year? Um, and like the disciples, you know, they weren't perfect. They made mistakes. We will make mistakes. We will not be perfect all the time. We will not always do the, the best thing possible in the time. We will not always put God first, unfortunately, no matter how much we would like to. Um, and like the disciples, they, this is my favorite part about the Bible looking into, they don't always follow the rules exactly how they're meant to be. Um, they put a lot of question into authority. They change a lot of stuff. They break stuff down. They break down barriers. They kind of get in the way and make trouble. And while I'm not like encouraging you all to just like break the law because you think it's cool, but I think what I, my biggest message to you, if you could come back with one thing, um, that I encourage you to think about the things that you do and think about the rules you follow and the routines you set and the institutions around you and why you do them. Um, do you do them because they're good or do you do them because they're, because they're there? Um, and I think one rule that I like to kind of use as a measure as like a, you know, feel if this is a really good thing or not, um, does this rule prevent me from loving my neighbor? And if it does, then I think that's a time when you can reflect on that and question if it's really such a good thing to be following. Um, so again, I'm not saying just like go break, break laws and stuff just because it feels cool, but you know, think about how how in, how ingrained things are, might, might, how ingrained things might be. Um, so yeah, those are kind of my thoughts. Um, I'm very excited to enjoy Easter tomorrow. Um, I hope you all will have a wonderful Easter. And I also invite you to think about your days ahead and remember that this is not the end of the story, just like it's not the end of the Bible. So. Peace be with you. Happy Easter. Amen.
Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carry those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The flood shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up. For Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit, wash away sin in this cleansing water, clothe the baptized with Christ, and claim your daughters and sons, no longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Washed and renewed in the mercy of God that endures forever, we pray this night for the church, the world, and all of creation. O oh God, you bring us from death to life with Christ. Fill and enlighten all the newly baptized. Enliven all the baptized in your church, so that we may be a sign of resurrection in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. At creation, you brought forth water and life. Bring life anew to all creation, sky, earth, and seas, sun, moon, and stars, plants and animals. Teach us to treasure and defend what you have declared to be good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you delivered your people, deliver all from bondage. Bring an end to war and brutality. Raise up leaders who listen for wisdom's voice. Cause righteousness to spring up among the nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your power extends to the depths of the grave. Bring hope and peace to all who are in the depths of sorrow or the fires of suffering. Heal all who are sick and comfort the grieving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. In the first light of dawn, Jesus' resurrection was revealed. Guard all who keep vigil in the night, tending to the sick, or ensuring public safety working or praying, as they await the morning, may hope dawn upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. You drew the amazed, the terrified, and the weeping to the empty tomb. Gather us with your people of all times and places to wonder at your power and, in, and rejoice in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To you, living God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one with whom we have been raised to new life, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the living Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let's share that peace with one another. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be known, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial 
and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and always. Amen. Amen.